I've hit a shot from right here, and I've, I've bladed it, and it's buried right there in the lip of the bunker. I know I've got no chance of getting that out of there. So what are my options? Blast it and get a better lie. <laughs> I, I, I can hit it, play it as it lies, and try to get it out, an unplayable which would be, I can declare that ball unplayable. A little different because a bunker is considered a hazard. All right, so if I take an unplayable, I can keep that point between me and the hole, and I can go back, remaining in the bunker, and drop it. Anywhere without the two, two club lengths? Two club lengths has to remain in the bunker. I can go two club lengths, keep it in the bunker, or I can keep that point between me and the hole, remain in the bunker, and drop it. What's my other option? Can you hit it from where you just hit it. I can hit it from where I just hit it. So I'm going to take an unplayable and I'm going to play it from where I played my previous shot. I'm going to drop it right here if this is where I played my previous shot. You're perfectly within the rules of golf to do that. Take a one shot penalty, you chip it up on the green, you one putt and you go to the next hole. That's if right. it's a tee shot, you can do that. If you wanted to go back, if you hit it in the bunker and you said I'm declaring that unplayable, you can go back to the tee and hit it again. What if you're there on that grid? That's, that's, a, that's an obstruction. <laughs> okay. That's just, that's like, just like being on a cart path. Okay. Much smaller. Okay, how do we do that? Well, if, I, if I'm standing on it, or if it interferes with my stance or swing, if it interferes with my stance, or if it interferes with my swing, I get one club length relief, no near the hole. Okay, so I take total relief. So say my ball is sitting right here. All right, my nearest point of relief off of that, being a right-handed player, is gonna be right here. That's my nearest point of relief. I get one club length from there. No nearer the hole. So if the hole's this way, I go back here one club length, or here, I'm probably gonna go back this way because it's a lot flatter line, right. rather than dropping it right here. If I drop it there, what's gonna happen? Okay. Just I'm right back where I was. I haven't taken relief. Okay, so I go one club length back here, drop it, and now I play. No penalty. Because I don't think some of us before uh, would just like move it just a little bit off of it. The drop thing I think is new to some of us. Yeah. Well it is, I mean, a lot of people just to speed up play, they'll move it within that club length. Okay. If, especially if you're playing the ball up, we'll just move it and play just to speed up play. Okay. But realistically, you're supposed to drop it. All right. One of our players' ball, ball landed in a hole. Now, what it looked like was an old sprinkler head hole, but there was nothing in this hole. But the ball was below ground. Right. Well, that would be a <laughs> really be a judgment call. Whether it's a, you get relief from burrowing animal holes, snake holes, snake holes, gopher holes, what have you. If it's an if it's a, an area like that that was say an old sprinkler head was pulled out because it was broken and they left a hole there, that would more than likely be considered ground under repair okay. and you would get relief, free relief from that. Well, if it was just a depression because the ground sunk, no, this was a hole. it would just and it just was a hole there and it wasn't ground under repair. It would, you'd have to either play it or, or take a, an unplayable with a stroke penalty. Okay, but if it's, if it's where you get free relief, it's like one, one club length? One club length for your nearest point of relief. Okay. No nearer the hole. If it was a tournament, more than likely if something like that here, since we have such a cracked half, we're all, <laughs> we're all so darn good, um, we'd probably mark that as ground under repair with a white line around it. Plug ball in the fairway. The plug ball in the fairway, that's an embedded ball plug ball in the fairway, you can pull it out, you may clean it, you may drop it as close to that point as possible. No, that is an embedded ball. So what, what area that just plugs right in? Yeah, yeah, if you hit it, it just sticks yeah. in. It's, it's yeah. actually yeah. embedded to where it's in its, uh, its own pitch mark, kind of like on the green. If you've ever seen after the green, it's about six inches. Just hit a ball and just, you only see half the ball. That's the same thing. That, the white stakes delineate the boundary of the golf course. Okay, anything 
on the other side of those stakes, the inside edge of those stakes are considered the out of bounds line going out. Okay, so anything outside of that is out of bounds. I have a question. And, and how do you play it? It's, yeah, it, it's play a stroke and distance penalty. Out of bounds is always a stroke and distance you got, penalty. You have to go back to where you hit it. You yes. have to go back where you previously played your last shot and play from there. And I'll tell you one other thing also, different from a hazard. You can never hit it. For a ball to be declared out of bounds, the entire ball has to be out of bounds. Whereas a hazard, a lateral hazard, water hazard, you can just overhang as long as it's breaking that plane. It's in the hazard. Out of bounds, the ball has to be completely out of bounds. 